Hello everyone, hope everyone is having a good day. Uh, this is Coach Miller, and I'll be guiding you through our uh, presentation about the New Deal, which was our response to how to fix the Great Depression. So, with that, moving forward, uh, we'll go over the Agree Disagree at the end, but there is the title of today's notes, uh, the New Deal, FDR's Relief, Recovery, and Reform Programs Designed to Help the Effects of the Great Depression. So what, first, we need to talk about just kind of how FDR was a little bit different than some of the previous presidents. Um, so one way was with the, what with the, uh, his group of his cabinet. That's his group of advisors that he had. Um, they call it the Brain Trust. A lot of times before FDR, a lot of the presidents would come in and their advisors were people that they already knew, people that uh, that uh, they had a relationship with already. They may have owed them a favor even or um, just someone that they felt had the same type of thoughts that they had. Well, FDR felt like he didn't want to bring just his friends in. He wanted to bring in the best and the brightest around the country. So he went to, he brought in special advisors from universities like Harvard and Stanford, some of the top economic experts in those fields to help come up with a plan to fix uh, the problems of the Great Depression. He was also the first one really to use media as a way to talk directly with people, and he used the radio. We talked about in the 1920s how the radio really took off. Well, he used that to his advantage, and he used, he, they, they call it the fireside chats. The idea was you would get your family, you'd gather around by the fire, and you'd listen to the president as he um, explained his new policies to you. So it, it was his way of talking directly to the American people. And he always tried to explain his policies in simple terms. So he was he was proposing some pretty radical changes as far as the way that how much power the government ha could have. And so he wanted to do it in a way that was people could understand. So he used simple terms and he always had an optimistic tone. He wanted people feeling good about what was going on and what was uh, what was uh, the, the direction the country was headed in. Um, and. We talked about the Bonus Army last class period. That was the uh, the uh, uh, group of World War One veterans that wanted their bonus, and so they came to the to uh, Washington D.C. and Hoover uh, sent the army to clear them out. Well, there was a second Bonus Army that came about under FDR. So they came again, again wanting their bonus. Um, instead of sending the sending out the army. What FDR did was he sent out his wife. So he sent out the first lady to talk to them and listen to them and see what they what they what they wanted. He brought out food for them and caught. So it was a very different approach than what you had under Hoover. The basic New Deal principles, basic idea is that we're that, that laissez faire didn't work, and that the federal government should help solve social and economic problems. So you know laissez faire is hands off. The New Deal is very hands on. We are going to, the government needs, has a responsibility to help people and more responsibility to help the poor. You know, Hoover didn't feel like the government should do that. He was that self-made millionaire, believed in rugged individualism, and so he didn't feel like the government should provide relief. FDR is the complete opposite of that. He felt like the government must do more and must be an active role in helping people back on their feet. And the number one way he felt like we could do this was by creating jobs. And so we'll talk about it in a little bit some of the ways that he created jobs. Um, the first hundred days, he, he wanted to get things going. I mean, he, he, he was not going to wait around at all. He, was, he said, we need to get this fixed now. Um, at the, when he took office, Congress was actually on a break. He said, nope, we're not going to be on a break. We're going to be on a special session. So I called a special session of Congress because we need to get things done. And so a bunch of bills were, were proposed, and Congress basically said yes to whatever Roosevelt uh, proposed. So, so um, they, were, they weren't even, they didn't necessarily know everything, well, what they were doing, but they, just, they were just passing a bunch of stuff. Um, one of the other things that he did was he declared a bank holiday. What I mean by bank holiday is that he closed all the banks for a few days. All banks around the country closed. Uh, and the idea behind this was that he wanted to inspect them. 
So he wanted to send in government inspectors around the country to see just how bad a shape were the banks in. You know, they had gone through the bank runs where a lot of people had withdrawn their money. Some of the banks had gone out of business. Some of them locked their doors altogether because they were afraid they were going to go out of business. But what they found out was the banks were actually in better shape than, than what they expected. So this is actually where he used his first fireside chat. He talked to the American people and told them that really the banks were not in, in dire straits like a lot of people thought they were. So what this did was this restored the public's confidence in the banks and people started putting their money back in the banks. They also passed two uh, constitutional amendments in this early period. One was the 20th Amendment. Um, back when FDR became president, he won the election in November of, eight, of 1936. He didn't take office until March of 1937. So he felt this was too much time of nothing getting done and that uh, we, we should speed things up. So they changed it to January. So now when uh, President Biden is inaugurated, it'll be on January 20th. Before that, before the 20th Amendment, it wouldn't have been until March. And the other amendment they passed was the 21st Amendment. And this was the amendment that repealed prohibition. The 18th Amendment was prohibition that banned alcohol. The 21st Amendment made it so that you could drink again. So one way you can remember that 21st Amendment, well, how old can you be to drink alcohol? You have to be 21. So that's one way you can kind of remember that one. All right, um, some of the people called his programs alphabet soup. And what they meant by this alphabet soup is soup that has the noodles look like letters. And so a lot of the programs that were created during this new deal had abbreviations of three, four letters, something like that, the FDIC, the CCC, the PWA. And so some people felt like, you know what, he's just eating a bowl of alphabet soup, three letters come together, and he's making a, uh, uh, making a program out of it. But what he focused on these programs, and we'll get into specifics of each one of this, was what we call the three R's. So the three R's were relief, recovery, and reform. So those are the three main things he focused. And I'll go into each one what I what I meant by that. So we'll, we'll just start with relief. Um, relief was short-term actions to help people until the economy recovered. It was to get people back on their feet. Um, and really when it was early on, this was something he really focused on a lot. Because he felt like the one... The way that people could really be helped out the most is if they had a job. I talked about earlier how creating jobs was one of the main principal philosophies of, of the New Deal. And he felt like people are going to feel better about themselves if they have a job. So in the first few years of the New Deal, a lot of what they focused on was creating jobs. And they, a lot of these jobs were created with through public works programs. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to do something about this high unemployment rate that we have. So one of the groups was the Civilian Conservation Corps. Uh, civilian, civil, civilian Conservation Corps, when you joined that, it was only for men, but you would uh, sign up for six months and uh, you would get paid $30 a month, but you were only allowed to keep five of it. The other 25 you had to send home. Uh, it was basically kind of like a boot camp in some ways. You would, you, you lived all that that six months you lived at a camp and what you did was you worked on things like state parks and things like that um so that was what the ccc was about um another one was the works progress administration that's it was had some similarities to the ccc but it was more on things like building schools and building bridges uh and so building building things for uh for cities and things like that so um those were two of the programs it gets people working again, and also it provides a public service. So that's that's the relief part. Um, recovery is a way that they wanted to get people buying stuff again. So they want to stimulate demand. So uh, one of the ways they want to do this was by increasing incentives to produce. So one of the things that they did was they created a relationship between business and government, which had never really been done before. It had been pretty much laissez-faire before, but the, uh, some of the things that they passed, uh, the National Recovery Act was one that uh, uh, was one of the programs that passed that kind of created this, this, this relationship with business and government. And then the Agricultural Adjustment Act was another, uh, this was a relationship between farmers and, um, and the government. And the Agricultural Adjustment Act, kind of the way it worked, 
you know, we said one of the causes of the Great Depression was overproduction. So when you have too much of something, the prices goes down, right? So the idea behind this is we want to have less crops. So under the Agricultural Adjustment Act, the government paid farmers in some instances not to grow too much crops. So they'd get money for growing less crops. But that's recovery. And then the third one is reform. So reform is making sure, trying to figure out a way that this does not happen again. So as measures aimed at fixing the problems of the structure of American economy, so we don't have another Great Depression. That is the goal behind the reform programs. Um, like I said, so this can never happen again. Um, one of the programs was the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the FDIC. So that was one of the programs that was created under the New Deal, and it is still around today. Um, the FDIC, the way it works is this, this dealt with banks. So um, before the FDIC, if you put your money in a bank and that bank went out of business, any money you had in there, you lost. Under the FDIC, the government is insuring your, your, your money in your bank up to a certain amount. Um, I believe it's $250,000 now. So, um, so that's the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. So you can feel safe up to a certain amount that your money, if it's in a bank that belongs to the FDIC, that it's going to be safe. And so if, if you go to a bank and you, they use, it's, a, it's a gold sticker that looks like that, says FDIC, then you know that that is insured by the federal government. So that is one thing. Make sure we don't have bank runs again to help out, to give people confidence that they can put money in the, in their bank, in the banking industry. All right. The other one is the Social Securities Exchange Commission. And this is one that uh, monitors the stock market. So we're part of the, uh, one of the problems that led to the, the Great Depression, not the single cause, but a, a, a factor in it was the, the crash of the stock market. So the Securities Exchange Commission was to make sure that this doesn't happen again. They are making sure that people are, are doing things legally and uh, monitoring the stock market to help prevent another crash. So that is the Ex Securities Exchange Commission. Both of them is with the idea of we're going to make sure this never happens again. We're going to make sure that we don't have a Great Depression like we did starting in 1929 up to through, up through about 1940. There were some limitations of the New Deal. Um, women... In many cases, we're not really a big part of New Deal programs. A lot of them excluded women. Um, African Americans, that was another group of people that uh, were not eligible for all positions and in some cases received lower pay. Um, this was partly uh, because if FDR wanted some of these programs passed, he had to have the South go along with them. And so... It was kind of he had to give a little in order to get what he wanted. So it's not that he want, necessarily wanted African Americans not to be included in them, but he had to go along with these southern states in order for to get the southern states to go along with his programs. So, um, and then another thing is so there was a big recession in 1937. So here we were doing well. If you can look, if you look at the U.S. unemployment rate, there he takes over in 1932. Unemployment's over 25%, and it keeps going pretty steadily down up until July of 1937 when it's about 11%. And then the economy went, over the next year or so, went in a bad spin for a while. Unemployment got up close to 20%, and so that was another limit of the New Deal. And then it started going down again. Um, so that's it for this lecture. Let me go over the agree-disagree real quick. But um, the... The New Deal followed laissez-faire business ideas that would be disagree. He was actually the opposite of laissez-faire. He was very hands-on. Uh, public works jobs provided help provide relief to the poor. Yes, it created jobs for them. And reform steps were taken to make sure that another Great Depression does not happen. And that is agree. That is, so it's disagree, agree, agree. And some of the reform steps, like I said, were the FDIC and the Securities Exchange Commission. All right, well, that's it for uh, the New Deal, and uh, thank you for your time.